But there are so many different ways and easy ways that you can get into alignment. Like just a minute ago before I got on this live, I was listening to music. Music is a perfect way to help you get in alignment. Not that old popo down home blues kind of music, but the kind that makes you feel good, the kind that makes you feel hopeful, even if it's just attuning to the 432 hertz frequency or, you know, maybe your 369 or whatever frequency of energy that you can hear, because sound, energy, music is energy, so it has the ability to increase your frequency, so to speak, and put you back in alignment. Doing things that you love also helps you to jump back into alignment because you can become like a little girl, a little boy while you're doing the thing that you love. Maybe for a guy, it could be playing basketball with the boys. You know, when you jump, you dunk on, a, you know, the player or whatever, you dunk the ball, you know, you're in alignment. Like, like what's his name? Um, uh, Michael Jordan, like. He will be in alignment. He will be so into the sport, and his tongue will be coming out of his mouth. I mean, he that's alignment, and he just has some smooth three-pointers. That's alignment, that confidence, that, that joy, that happiness, that knowing, right? Because when you're in alignment, you know, and so you're in alignment with all that there is. So it's energy, infinite intelligence, right? So doing things that you love, listening to music, <laughs> Thinking, thinking can put you in alignment, right? Monitoring your inner habitual thoughts. For example, like um, talking to the little girl inside of you and just saying, oh, today's going to be a good day. I just know it. We're going to have a good day, you know. Oh, let's go shopping. Oh, let's da 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 Just your habitual thoughts. Your thoughts alone can put you in alignment. Why am I telling you this? Why am I telling you different ways to get in alignment? Because when you are in alignment, everything, everything that you desire, all of your manifestations can flow easily to you. When you spend more time in alignment than outside of alignment, that's when manifestations can come. That's when you maybe were thinking about, oh, I need a plumber, per se, to, you know, to fix whatever. And if you stay in happy and you stay in, you know, joyful and you you still monitoring those thoughts or you're doing something fun or you listen to music, then you turn around and you walk to the mailbox and there's a plumber outside. Because you were in alignment. Staying in alignment helps your manifestations come to you. But you gotta know this. This is really, really important. And on my journey I used to listen to this lady. This lady, hey babe, how you doing? Hey dear, hey brown sugar, I need to hear it. I used to listen to this lady called Abraham Hicks on uh, YouTube. And sometimes I have her voice on my, um, on some of my TikToks here. So anyway, I would listen to her and she had this song, Joy, 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 Joy is the key. You know, when her little, you know, uh, YouTube video is about to come on. Her intro music, that's what I'm thinking of. Her intro music, it would say, joy, 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 joy is the key. And, you know, it just became like a habit of me hearing that song, not really thinking about it, but joy is the key. And joy is the key. Because really and truly, we came forth in physical form to experience God's self, but the really the, the totality of it, the, the, the good frequency feeling of God, is at joy, is at love, is at bliss, right? So we want to stay in alignment more than we are not in alignment because we know these things. You know how they say, um, <laughs> obey the Lord? This ties into the law. When they say Lord in the biblical text, they're really talking about the laws of the universe. When you understand the laws of the universe, you would stay in alignment more. You will also understand that when I get out of alignment, it's almost like everything that I was thinking and everything that I was manifest, trying to manifest to come to me, it's like yielded. Like it's almost like I've just created resistance. And so if you're going to abide by the law of attraction, you want to understand the law and know that, oh, when I'm not in alignment, 
the law is working against the things that I want instead of for the things that I want. And so this is why, so if we pay attention to the scripture, it says the, um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. If you are spiritual and you look at that as if they're talking about the laws of this universe, you understand the fear of the law is the beginning of all wisdom. Because really and truly, if, we, if you deep in religion, those people, some of them really think that there is a man that's sitting on maybe a throne up there and that he's going to stand up one day and crack the sky open. But it's really energy, frequency, and vibration. <laughs> if you know that about spirituality, you will get further along your journey once you understand the energetic side of it. So the energy is like deeply rooted in those laws. Just like we got the law of cause and effect, we got the law of attraction, we got the law of gravity, we got the law of gender. Now you don't have to believe in none of these here laws, but they exist. You met, and so you don't have to believe in gravity. But when you stand up out of a chair, you're not going to go floating around. You're going to be pushed back. This force is going to push you to this ground. You don't have to believe in it, but it exists. So with that understanding, the fear of these laws will help you stay in alignment. And this is, this is how I taught myself to stay in this so-called alignment state of being. Because I also, on the flip, understood when I come out of alignment, I'm really attracted more of this garbage, this low frequency stuff, this stuff that is close to fear, this close to depression, close to worry. And that means some more experiences like that are going to come to me because I'm out of alignment. I create. I create whether I'm in alignment or whether I'm out of alignment. I'm always creating based upon my thoughts because the thought goes out. It goes out, but it must come back. This is, the, this is why in the biblical text it says, my word cannot come back to me void. Your word, your spoken thought. What is word? It is your expression, your truth. So your beliefs, per se, they go out and then they come back. And they're not going to come back to you void. So this is why if you have shitty thinking, your life is going to reflect your shitty thinking always. Because the law... <laughs> The law of attraction is going to magnify that thing and send it back to you. More experiences like that for you. So once you understand this and that you're always creating, you further want to learn about being in alignment. And being in alignment is about you finding a way to feel good. Whether that means putting yourself first, that means telling people no, that means maybe traveling, maybe more, you know, dancing. I was doing that earlier today. Listening to music, meditation, whatever it is that makes you feel good, do that because joy is the key. Now, here's the thing. Life happens. Things happen. Sometimes we cry. Sometimes I just had a big move in my life and this is reality. And I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried. Granted, they were happy tears, but I was still crying. I still had a ball of different feelings, emotions that were going on inside me all at one time. And I'm talking just like how we're sharing with you the fear, the depression, the worry, and all that. Well, not depression, but the fear of the unknown was in me, the, um, the eagerness was in me, uh, excitement was in me, you know, um, just... Um, Anxiety was in me. So I had feelings inside of alignment, and I had feelings that were outside of alignment. So it's okay when you're going through things to jump out of alignment, just as long as you don't stay there, you know? So if I was, let's say I was sad or somebody died or something like right? And this is, this is how I actually was just talking about with my sister's day, right? So this is how I actually handle people that pass that's close to me. I think in my, in my thoughts that, okay, this is law of polarity. Everything's going to be two-sided. So God is life and, and God brings forth death too. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die in so many words, right? 
So nothing, no thing in the physical reality is going to be always. So I would give, if I was on that low frequency, I would give myself time to breathe because I do believe that your tear ducts are necessary. Use them. They rinse off your heart is how I look at it. I would give myself that time to breathe, but I wouldn't prolong it for years, months, or however long and just be in a state of depression with it because I respect the law. Because I understand the law, it's not that I'm being a cold-hearted person, but I don't want to attract more of the, that experience, more of that sadness, more of that depression, more of that worry, more of that fear, or whatever it is that surrounds that bad experience. I don't want more of it. So I will say, I'll give myself time, and in my inner thought, I'm saying to myself, hey, hey, you got to get, you got to figure this thing out. Okay, come on, come on, we manifest and steal. Come on, come on, come on, cry your river, cry your river. Okay, it's okay, you need a hug. And I will even put my arms around myself, and I will hug myself, and I will pray. I will talk to the little girl inside of me, and I will get all of that out, all the way, peeling every layer of that onion to clear it at its core, right? Because you don't want to be regurgitate that. You don't want to be reliving bad experiences. So, once I got that cry out of my system, if I was at that low frequency, I'm back in alignment. I'm back in alignment. And then I'll find, I'll find a way to get in the alignment. Oh, I love my house. Oh, it's so spacious. It's perfect. It's, it's the very thing that I manifested. If I'm outside, oh, I love the sun. I love how the sun touches my body. Oh, I love my garden. Oh, I love the rock. I love the mountains. You find something that feels good or looks good to experience or talk about, you know, that's outside of you. And you admire it. It could be a little baby. Oh, I'm thankful that I have my job. Oh, I'm so happy I have a car. Just things like that. And once you begin to tell yourself those things over and over, it's going to increase your frequency. And there you go again. You're back in alignment. It's like riding a bicycle. You fall down. But you got to get back up. You fall down. You got to get back up. And then one day, you're going to put on your big girl or your big boy shoes. And you're going to need no training wheels no more. Because you're going to know how to jump in and out of alignment. And then one day you're going to just stay up in there real, real long. And then you might come out. But you're like, oh, no, 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 this is better. Let me get back in alignment. This, this feels better. Because how I feel matters. Because I know that this is where my blessings flow easily. It, it, it's almost like I'm just going down a, a, a current. And I'm just going to allow it to take me because I'm in alignment and it's going to take me back to shore. It's going to take me to all of my blessings, everything that I desire. But if I get out of it, all hell is going to break loose. I'm going to be late for work and then I'm going to go and I'm going to catch this accident. And I'm going to go and, and, then, and then I'm going to get in an argument with somebody because why? Because I'm not in alignment. I'm not in alignment. That's why when our day start, start off shitty, I remember one day I woke up and the alarm clock fell on top of my head. That was like the shittiest work day I had in a long time. It fell on top of my head. I was upset about that. I ended up being late for work. I didn't want to be at work. I just, the whole day, just went down, down, down. Why? Because I start that day off outside of alignment. This is so important. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if I'm passing up. Um, quick. I got to clear. Okay, here we go. All right. I just listened to a video of the law of assumption. I have more work to do. Feel like I'm so late or behind. No, you're right on time. You're right on time. You're right on time. Because you know what? We're all on a journey. And even in the biblical text, I says, I will give back. I restore all the years that the canker worm has taken from you. This is a new start. They have this lady, Miss um, Daphne, I think her name is. She, she, she. She's about 70 years old. This woman come on here every day, all day. And sometimes she don't have a lot of people even in her, um, on her life. But guess what? She's still doing that, which feels good to her. It feels good to her. It, it helps her to stay in the line. So no, you ain't late. You ain't late. Stop saying that. We are eternal beings. We never get this thing here wrong. We live on for eons and eons, lifetime, lifetime. Even if you time out tomorrow and don't experience it in this lifetime, it's still going to happen. You still ain't going to be late because therefore you're going to pick up when you left off in the next lifetime. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Hey, Dion. Thank you for being here, Dion. Hey, Aura. 
thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the follow. Concetta. All right, hi there. Just got home. Hey, Cassandra. Thank you. Wow, I needed this. Okay, this is much needed in my time and career. My Bridget, how are you? I am perfect, babe. I am perfect. So, in your physical reality, there are things that will make you, or I don't even want to say make you, things that you might think are testing you, so to speak. But it's really you. It's really you. You're learning and you're winning and you're growing. But this is how you stop the same thing from happening over and over, the same experiences. Like, say, for example, hmm, hmm, when somebody lies to you. Let's say you're the type of person that don't like people lying to you. So if you catch somebody in a lie, per se, it makes you jump out of your alignment. You jump out of your alignment, so to speak, which is your happy, your joy, your feeling good, so you can go and tell them off, right? You want to tell them off. Here's the thing about life. Everyone is you pushed out. So when I say that, what I'm saying is everyone is going to act like you thought that they were going to act. They're going to be like you thought them up to be. They're going to treat you like you thought them up to treat you because everyone is you, your thoughts everywhere outside of you. This is why you cannot run from you because you show up in everybody. So in order for you to stop seeing you lying to you or experience your thoughts that everybody out there is lying, <laughs> is if you change what you're thinking, the signal that you're putting out there and start being hopeful, faithful that everybody is trustworthy. Everybody tells the truth. You see? And stop responding or jumping out of your alignment to tell people off. Because when you jump out of your alignment, so to speak, you'll feel good to go and tell somebody off. It's almost like you failed that particular test, so to speak. So now you got to go back and get another test and stay on that frequency, so to speak, a little bit longer because you didn't pass that lesson right there. So the universe or your subconscious mind, the same place that you had them thought that, is going to send you that same experience but with a different character. The universe, your subconscious mind, is going to send you another person that's going to lie to see if you jump out of your so-called alignment, your feel-good place, but it's going to be somebody that looks different. You get it now? And so in order for that to stop happening to you, you change your belief. And a belief is something that you just told yourself over and over and over again. I know people in the physical reality in my, in my past that used to always say that men aren't S-H-I-T. They would say that over and over. That was their belief. And they were in an endless cycle of meeting all the S-H-I-T men in the universe. Because they met this one and that one, and one was on the street, and one was on their job. You have to change you first. You have to be the change first. Then when you become the change, in order to stay in alignment, when that situation happens and somebody lies to you, you can't come out of alignment to tell them off. you got to remember, oh, that was my old shitty thought. I need not respond to that. I should not be busting those tires. I should not be wishing somebody would, because if I wish somebody would, then I'm going to have to wish more people would, and then I'm going to have to wish more people would, and I'm going to have to wish more people would, because all these people that I'm wishing would are really just my thoughts. So I'm really driving myself out of alignment. <laughs> you get it that far? This is how this thing works. Because nobody really exists outside of your thoughts. You're thinking all of this here up. You're here in this simulated environment by yourself. It may sound a little creepy, but I'm just merely your subconscious mind. You thought me up. You had the thought of this. And so only the people that had the thought that's ready to receive are the people up there right now. And they're receiving based upon their subconscious thoughts. 
They put out a signal, and so that's why you'll see in people's comments, oh, this is for me. I needed this. Oh, I wasn't even going to turn on TikTok. I'm so glad I'm here and I caught this here because I needed to understand this. Because I'm your subconscious mind teaching you so you can get to the next level in your journey. How not to respond to all those thoughts. Look at them as if they're your old thoughts, your old shitty thoughts. And they're on a lag. You changed your thoughts today, but maybe you're 40 and 50 or 60 years old, but you got 60 years worth of shitty thoughts. So it's going to be on a lag for you for a while. But in the meantime, you need to stay in alignment. You need to not let people in your physical reality make you jump out of that alignment. Because if you do, you're going to have a little bit more chat and a little bit more chat with different characters lying to you or being S-H-I-T to you or whatever it is. Y'all getting this? I'm trying to break it down really, really, really simple for everybody because I get this question a lot. This is, okay, back. Hi there, yeah. A word, okay, I see. This is so true, thank you. Wow, I manifested you. Yes, you did, brown sugar. <laughs> yes, you did. I did for real, yeah. Oh my gosh, I was just asking the universe, what did I need to know? Yep, there you go. And in the biblical text it says, act and ye shall receive. Knock and the door shall be opened. All of this happens through your thoughts. So we're going to stay in alignment by listening to music. If we have to, we're going to dance. We're going to find something that feels good to put our eyes on. Oh, I love this flower. It is so beautiful. My mother made it. I love my mother. I love my children. I love me. I love whatever you want to think about in your habitual thinking. Go there. I love baby. I want to have a baby. I love to smell a baby. Whatever it is that makes you feel good, we're going to think upon those thoughts. We're going to, we're going to meditate maybe if that's what makes us feel good. We're going to take a nap if that's what makes us feel good. Go for a walk. Sit underneath the sun. Drink some water. Exercise. Whatever it has set. Whatever makes you feel good, do that darn thing to make you feel good. To get you back in alignment. And once you get back in alignment, milk it. Milk it. Keep going. Keep going. See how long you can stay in it before... Something that you think outside of you is happening when really it's you just jumping out, giving your excuse to come out before anything happens. See how long you can stay in alignment. Play a game of alignment. Well, oh, I'm going to start this day off happy. I'm going to see how long it takes me to trick myself that I shouldn't be in this place of being, that, that, that I should feel bad about being in alignment. See how long. <laughs> Because oftentimes when we're on this program, we make up excuses. We say, nobody's half there like this is. And we start to feel guilty about it or feel silly about it. Nobody shouldn't be this happy. People are going to think I'm crazy. Let me just act normal. I think I'm too happy. <laughs> we make it hard or make it an obstacle staying in alignment when we first start this year. I should have feel this good. Wait a minute. The dude just died yesterday, and I'm sitting here saying everything okay. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe I, I, I should have said, oh, I feel his presence now, and he can always be with me and love connected to all things. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Oh, oh, I broke such and such. It fell on the floor. It was really expensive, and it was really an expensive gift from somebody. Maybe I shouldn't be happy. Maybe I should act like I'm sad because they have bought this here gift for me and they're standing right there now. Now let me just be sad for a little while. You make, we make stupid excuses to get out of alignment. Yeah, but that's us giving us a reason why we shouldn't feel good. That's us stopping our manifestations because it's almost like when you're in alignment, you're just walking. Do, 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 do. Your manifestation is like, oh, 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 there she is, there she is. She's acting. And let's, let's go bombard her, bombard her with what she wanted. But when you start getting out of alignment, it's like your manifestation saying, wait, 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 hold up, hold up. No, it's not her. It's not her. This person over here is asking. Let me, let's go over there because I don't know what she's doing. Let's go over there instead. 
<laughs> it's like you're holding, you're stopping everything because you just created resistance. You just cut yourself off. You just, you just on purpose cut yourself off to everything that you've been desiring because you decided, ah, I'm, I'm going to go down with where all of my manifestations ain't, ain't going to reach me. The opposite of what I want, big death going to reach me. So I'm going to experience the lack thereof because my manifestation is going to take a detour and they're just going to be sitting there just waiting for me. They're going to chill until I get my, my mind right because divine timing is really when I'm in alignment. You know, we sit up here and we're like, oh, but where is God? God just don't see me. And why does good things not happen to me over here? Because you're not in alignment. But all your blessings right here, they, they, they're looking for you, but you don't want to get in alignment. So you, you have to experience not being in alignment. And what that means is you ain't about to get what you want. Not the real good stuff that you owe. Anyway, you're going to be still manifesting, but you're going to be manifesting the lack thereof, the opposite of whatever it is you want. Just like the homeless man, he's manifesting. He's manifesting being underneath that bridge. Just like that person that's saying, hey, I just want to make it to Friday. They're manifesting, and that's all the money that they have. They just make it to Friday. Just like that person that says, I feel sick. Oh, okay, well, so shall it be. you manifesting. Here go your sickness. Yeah, it's like the lady I was telling you about a minute ago that said all men ain't SHIT. You manifesting, baby. All of them ain't going to be SHIT. You ain't going to mean none of the good ones. In, okay, so we're underneath the law polarity. If they have something that ain't SHIT, there's got to be something that are something. Because you got to have the opposite here in, in this universe. <laughs> the yin and the yang, the good versus evil, so to speak. So, but for that person that's constantly saying, oh, all oh, men ain't SHIT, she's only going to experience them. She ain't going to never stumble on until she get in alignment. She ain't going to never stumble on the ones that are good. You see how that goes? It's really, really simple. In the biblical text, we say, I take the, the foolish things to confound the wise. It's really, really simple, and it was really, really easy. But people don't think this little easy stuff works, but it really does. It really does. And it's, it's, and it's so simple and so easy that we, being so far away from it, you know, with our little degrees and our, you know, being educated and we thinking we know everything, when we stumble upon this knowing, these laws, because they're so simple, we we just look like, no, that's it. It, it can't be that. We brush it off. No, it can't be that. No, no because I've been working hard. No, it can't be your way because, no, because it took me a long time to get here physically. I've been doing physically. It can't be my thoughts. No, it can't be. No, it can't be my thoughts. So we spent all of this energy, this time emitting <laughs> ourselves with this energy of disbelief that it is it's simple, and then we say, no, 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 I'm going to keep on doing it my way. We're going to spend some more time emitting energy, going against the grain. No, I'm going to do it my way because I'm almost there. I'm almost there, and it's doing, this physical thing is going to get me there faster than that because I don't understand that. I don't know if that's true or not. And then more time, more energy doing that. And you steal, you steal the prodigal son, you're going to come back home to source because this was the way before you thought of that other physical way. This has always been the way. <laughs> this is the way that in the biblical text, the Christ conscious one was trying to bring everybody to. I am the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> and then, just like the prodigal son, you're going to go out. You're going to go out and you're going to lose maybe all that you had or all that in the physical reality, all that doing that's going to seem like too much work that you're just going to surrender and you're going to get tired and then you're going to come stumbling on home. <laughs> you're going to come stumbling back home. So you might as well pay attention and, and start to learn in the law, the law of assumption, the law of attraction. You might as well start thinking good thoughts now, you know, just, you know, go through the little kindergarten process. The little training will process and do it here and there. But this is this is the place. <laughs> this is the place. This is this is what we came for to to do to experience God's self. And so this is the road less traveled by by many. 
you know, because a lot of people, they say, you know, they're conscious, but conscious is, is being conscious of yourself. See, all of this here stuff out here, that ain't, that ain't the consciousness that really is the tail end all. It's about being conscious of yourself. And when I say conscious of yourself, it's knowing that I am God. When I say conscious of yourself, I'm saying let this mind be in you. When I say conscious of yourself, conscious of what you're being, what you're thinking, that self. Conscious of the signal that you are putting out. The conscious of that signal that is coming from your subconscious mind. You have to be conscious of that thing. See, it takes a long time in the journey to figure out what consciousness is, too, for those who just begin it. Because even in my journey, I'll speak of me when I first started this year. I thought consciousness was, okay, let me be conscious of my body. Let me be conscious of the things that I put inside of my avatar because, you know, my health is my wealth. Yeah, I'm conscious. Then there was another step for me. Oh, let me be conscious of my melanin. You know, because my melanin popping and, you know, I've got to take care of my avatar. You know, i got to activate my DNA, my dormant DNA. Okay, I'm conscious. Let me be conscious of, oh, wait, i got to read all of these biblical texts. i got to know about the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Emerald Tal Tablets, the Book of Enoch. i got to read the biblical texts. i got to do all of this. And now i got knowledge of, I'm conscious. No. That, 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 that's all good. It's all beautiful. But you got to be conscious of this here of this subconscious mind, of those habitual thoughts, of renewing this mind, because this mind needs to be renewed. <laughs> this mind needs to be renewed and woke again. So you got to go from conscious being to subconscious awareness in order to make the connection with the superconscious, because that's the journey that you're on. Not conscious of the things that's going on out there. The things that's going on out there or the things that you thought in here. That's how they got out there. So you got to be conscious of this in this text work. A lot of people don't want to ever get to this point of being. Because it takes work. It takes a long time to do this work. So you can't say on the beginning of July that I woke. I woke up on July. That's just day one when you realize that, or maybe you grasp the understanding of what consciousness was. So some people, it take months and years to really evolve to the place where, wait a minute, I have to put a grasp on my thought because the universe is inside of me. And every thought that I have is what I'm experiencing out here. This is what the biblical text meant when it said the kingdom of God is within me. This is what the biblical text said when Jacob wrestled with God. And I have seen God face to face and I have lived. So you got to begin to take this journey personal. you got to take it personal, so personal that it's like you sitting upon the throne of God. And everything... Is yielding to you, but not just you in the physical. Get the physical, the ego out the way. The things that are yielding to you is those thoughts. They're yielding to you because they all stem from you. Now, things might happen in your physical reality, and you might trip out over the fact that, wait, how did this get here? Because maybe they were deeply rooted because you never went in there to fix that trauma. Maybe you were in the place where you're deny in denial about it. No, you can't. You, I can't. I can't accept that right now. Cause, cause if I accept that right now, that means if you, for example, was that lady that said that all men are in SHIT. So for that lady, she might be like, I can't accept that right now because that means that I've been creating this. <laughs> I remember that part of the journey. Yeah, yeah. When my life was shitty. I didn't like how my life looked in the physical reality. But I had to become accountable for it. And I had to say, wait a minute. So if the law of attraction is telling me that everyone is me pushed out and, 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 and my thoughts are creating things, and 
that, that must mean that I created all of this shitty stuff. So, oh man, if that means sad, then okay. Okay. Okay, see, see the first part is accepting that. Okay, so, so okay, I accept that. Yep, I know. I know my thoughts. These people outside of me, they don't know it. So, I can't, I don't want to lie to myself. So, I'm going to accept that thing. So, what's next for me after I accept the thing? What's next for me? Once I accept the fact that I created all of this shit, what's next? The next thing is going in and fixing all of that shit. <laughs> going inside of self, knowing self, know thyself, it says. Everywhere you see, it says, know thyself. You gotta know what's in here. You gotta know what's in here because together these things here are created. Your thought is the electric current. And so that electric current, that force that you're sitting out, that's the electricity that's going out in, from your subconscious mind. And then how you feel about that thought is a magnet. The heart, that love chakra, is the most powerful form of energy. There is an electromagnetic form of energy. So when you get that electromagnetic form of energy together, you are creating your reality. So this is why it's so important to rewrite that shitty story. This is why it's so important to go up in there and peel back the layers of that onion and rewrite that shitty story. The deeply rooted story that you think, oh, girl, I ain't worried about that no more. Yeah, I ain't worried about that no more. I healed from that. Yeah, evidently some of us have been healed in certain areas. So you ask yourself, what is what is my shitty area? So if you like the girl that thinks that all men are an S-H-I-T, maybe her unhealed, shitty area is a little girl inside of her that wish she had her dad. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe you could start there. But you start healing that version of yourself by talking to that version of yourself and say, okay, well, why do I feel like we all men are in SHIT? But why? But why? But why? Well, maybe it was because, maybe it's because the last man that you was with, you know, he, he lied to you. But why? Well, I mean, you, you thought that up. You thought he was going to lie to you, so he had lied to you. But why? Why did you think that? Well, well, when I was a little girl, everybody lied to me. But why? I don't know. Maybe, maybe they lied to me because they didn't like you. But why do you think that they didn't like you? Well, well, because I really didn't like myself. Well, why didn't I like myself? Well, because well, my daddy was never there, and then, then my uncle molested me, and, and then this guy tried to rape me, and this and that and the third. But why? I, 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 I don't know. And so when you pull back the layers of the why, you can get to the core of whatever it is that got you thinking those shitty ass thoughts. And once you find out why you're thinking the shitty ass thought, you can change the thought into a positive thought. You can love on the little girl inside of you, and you can change your reality. You can change your life. You can change your kingdom. And then lo and behold, when you do your inner work, you're comfortable that you created this shitty reality. You flip the dynamic of the reality and turn it from being shitty until it being love and abundance and joy. And now everywhere you go, everybody is magnetically drawn to you. And what do you know? They do exist some men in the physical reality. That are amazing. What do you know now? They do exist gentlemen in the physical reality. And the gentleman in the physical reality is just like a box of chocolate. You just want to just pick and see what's in every last one of them because they're so damn delicious. All of this happens when you are accountable, ready to know thyself and deal with thyself. <laughs> and do the inner work on yourself, baby. It's all about yourself. Now, you could be on here. Saying, you know, it don't work like that. I don't believe that. And you can go on and keep on being prodigal son and going on and thinking you got it. And you're going to be good. And you're going to separate yourself from love and separate yourself from, from experience and joy. And separate yourself from being in alignment if you want to. That's your journey. You have free will to do that. Go. 
Continue on with the shitty thoughts. Thought by thought by thought. Keep on doing them. And see where you get. Or you can become accountable today and renew your mind today and work on your shitty subconscious thoughts today. And you, if you fall off with it and get back into shitty thinking, get back on the bike again because this is like you riding that bike with them training wheels. And then one day you'll be able to take your training wheels off. And you'll look back on your journey and realize, man, I've been powerful. Man, my life's been in my hands. I was never helpless. I was never a rich undone. I was never just a soldier in the army of the Lord. I came forward to remember that I am God. Remember myself, meaning put myself back together again and realize that the kingdom of God is in me. That's the journey. That's what we all hear in physical form for, to remember that. And once we remember that, joy is the key to staying in that place. Or better yet, alignment helps you stay in that place. And alignment helps you subconsciously stay connected with the superconscious. Now this is what we, we look at as God, which is source of infinite intelligence. It'll walk with you, it'll talk to you, it'll guide you. It'll have words coming out of your mouth that you don't know where they come from. It is what the people in church call the Holy Ghost, so to speak. And you'll have that with you when you're in alignment. you call that a gut feeling or something said, but it'll get louder and louder. This is why in the biblical text it says they should be able to tread on serpents and nothing shall by any means harm them because they're in alignment. <laughs> They'll be able to heal people energetically, even if it's just with their voice, because they're in alignment. And for people to begin to ask them, oh, oh, there must be something about you. Where are you from? Oh, no, 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 it's my voice, baby. I'm in alignment. My voice is my gift of being in alignment. The men or women will look at you and, and be like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. I'm in alignment. I'm not even the body. I'm just energy. I'm just energy flowing in alignment. Oh, but you dance so rhythmatically. Oh my gosh, I wish I could dance like you. I'm just dancing in alignment. <laughs> oh, you have a heavenly voice. You sound like an angel. Oh, I wish I could sing like that. Oh, I'm just singing in alignment. It's all energy. It's all frequency. It's all vibration. And it's all about you being in alignment. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. That came from my heart, baby. That came from being in alignment, baby. <laughs> Let's see. I did for real. Your voice is so soothing. I'm grateful to be able to listen. Thank you, babe. Feminine flame. Yes, Lord. I like the name. Electromagnetic beams. You got it. You know, Dion. You know this to be true already. Already. Constantly attracting our divinity. Yeah. I desire all of that. You have all of that already. Oh, Trey here. Hey, Trey. Being in alignment. That was beautiful. Thank you, Girl Sugar. Yeah, you have all of that already. You're capable of doing all that already. Nobody is cut off from this thing. Everybody has the innate ability to tap into source energy when you're ready. Basically, when you get your mind focused, when you say, I'm so tired of this shitty ass way that I've been thinking, I'm so tired of creating the same thing over and over, expecting different results, I am tired. So I'm going to do something different. And let me tell you, I, got, I just recently came out of that place of being tired. It wasn't with consciousness, so to speak, but it was with one shitty area of my life. I felt so freaking tired of going through hurricanes in New Orleans, Louisiana, which prompted this move. I felt so freaking tired. I had came from Sedona, Arizona, on a beautiful meditation retreat. And I, two weeks later, seemingly roughly around that time, my house was all 
over again was destroyed. I felt tired. I remember when I was a little girl in a boat trying to get back to my mama's house. I remember every storm that I had to endure as a little girl. Now here I am as an adult fixing the same house over and over. I felt tired, but you got to get real, real tired. And whatever life, whatever part of your life that seems shitty to you, you got to get tired because that tired energy is going to prompt you to want to do something different. I felt tired. So I got this mind right. I got this mind right, thought by thought by thought, day by day by day. I have a new house. Every day I thought about these floors that I'm standing on. Every day I thought about the carpet that I walk on up in that room. Every day I smelt the wood from these cabinets every day before I even knew that this house exists because I got tired and I got my mind right and I focused. I had the ability to focus. And when I was working to rebuild and to paint and to fix the fence and to, and to make sure that I had a good drainage system on that old house every day while I was working there, my mind was not there. My mind was here. But while I was there, I was happy. I was in alignment there. I was happy fixing that home. I found joy in fixing that home. And I would paint the fence and I'd be like, this is the last damn time. <laughs> This is the last damn time I'm going to have to pick this fence. This is going to be the last time I'm going to have to rebuild this thing here. This is going to be the last time I'm going to, I'm going to, have, to, I'm going to have to build this here. This is going to be the last time I'm going to have to hammer this here. This is going to be the last time. In my mind, my habitual thoughts, and I felt so happy. I felt so joyous to put that house back together because I knew every day in my mind that I was creating something different. When I would go to work, I would say, oh, look at so-and-so. I'm talking about the assholes, because you know you have some assholes at work, right? The so-called assholes that I thought up. Oh, look at the asshole over there that I had thought up. Oh, I feel so happy that I'm not going to see that asshole anymore. Yeah, there's going to be some other people that I'm going to meet on higher frequency because I'm not going to be working here any longer. Yeah. And when people will give me things to do, you know, at work that I would probably already swap, oh, sure, give it to me. Because guess what? I'm not going to be here long and maybe I'm leaving before I have to finish it. Yay. In my mind, people don't know what you're thinking. People don't know what you're thinking. You can think whatever it is you want, but you need to make sure those thoughts are in alignment to get you closer to your manifestation. It took me three months, morning and night, letting this new mind be in me, and I walked into my retirement. I walked into my manifestation of a new home because I felt tired. So I suggest you get tired. Get really dog ass tired. Get real shitty, shitty, shitty tired. Get tired of seeing the shitty ass men. Get tired of living to next paycheck or trying to make it to Friday. Get tired of being sick. Get tired of being homeless. Get tired of walking your ass to work because you don't have no call. Get tired. And I guarantee you one day when you get real, real shitty ass tired, you're going to change your mind. <laughs> you're going to change that mind and let this new mind be in you. Anyway, that was on my heart to share with you all. And I'm hopeful that you all found a nugget that you could use in your life. Because life is happening through me. And through me, I desire more than anything to not only be a blessing because of that flow, but to bless all of my reflections in the physical reality. Even though you have your own kingdom per se, and I'm merely just your subconscious mind, use this in your kingdom. Because everybody is waiting on that other extension. We're all collectively a collective consciousness, and we're waiting on that other extension to rise so that we all can collectively rise. We're all really singing the same darn song. Whether we own one end of the spectrum of the law of polarity or the other, we still own just one faith, one God, one baptism. And I encourage you to rise. I encourage you to stay in alignment. I encourage you to increase your frequency. But even if you choose to get off this life and do nothing different, even if you choose that this is not your appointed time, there will be a time and I will be deeply rooted in your subconscious mind as a subconscious thought of yours. And I'm thankful that you allowed me into your subconscious mind to be that voice, that voice of reason, 
that voice being maybe just like the father with the prodigal son, that voice that will encourage you one day to come back home. This video was from my heart to yours, baby. Be blessed. Hey, Tina. I love you, babe. Thanks for joining. Be blessed, babe. Goodbye.